Our infectious diseases specialist, Dr. Zane Chagla, palliative care physician, Dr. Amit Arya, and epidemiologist, Rewa Dionandan from the University of Ottawa. Great to have you all here. Dr. Arya, I want to start with you because it was your Twitter feed a couple of days ago that sort of sparked our interest in this, suggesting that you really think that the second doses need to be prioritized once again to our elderly population to get them in arms sooner. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely believe that's the case. I mean, we know that through this pandemic, older adults have been disproportionately affected. I mean, I work as a palliative care physician on the front lines in the hospital system, in home care and in long-term care, and that's what I've seen. In long-term care specifically, I want to highlight that we had such death and devastation from COVID-19. But now, with two doses of the vaccine, we've essentially seen that serious illness and death from COVID-19 there has been completely eliminated. But sadly, in the hospital, hospital system over the last few weeks. I'm still seeing people who are coming in who are sick and dying from COVID-19 when they shouldn't have to because they've only had one dose. So I strongly believe that it's time to shift strategy, prioritize older adults for the second dose of the vaccine as soon as possible. I think a lot of people listening to that are wondering, aren't we doing that already? And we're not, Dr. Arya? Yeah, so from what I understand, it's really a first dose strategy to trying to get first doses into people. And I think at this point in time, we have the supply. That's what I'm hearing. I mean, we're getting two to 2.5 doses of mRNA vaccine per week here in Canada. So I don't see a reason why it can't happen. We have to remember that we're not all affected equally through this pandemic. We know that older adults have disproportionately once again borne the brunt of the pandemic. And we're still seeing these people coming into the hospital when we shouldn't have to. I mean, I, I just can't imagine Imagine the, you know, the anguish for families and especially for myself and my colleagues, you know, seeing people who are getting sick and, you know, who are sick and dying and they shouldn't have to, you know, go through that at this point in time. Uh, Ray, what, what do you make of the provinces moving to a strategy of opening up to 12 year olds now for the first dose while, you know, as Dr. Ari is suggesting, you know, the people population over 60 are still waiting for their second dose. It, does that make sense from an epi epidemiological point of view? Well, we're staring down the barrel of a potential arrival of B16172, the so-called Indian variant. That's a scary variant. It's it's uh, causing crises in the UK, for example. We know from this variant that one dose gives you about 33% protection, but two doses gives you over 80% protection. So that's my concern right now, which means that we have to fortify that vulnerable portion of the population. As was noted, the elderly, healthcare workers, the immunocompromised. That should be our priority, I think. So while it's great that we can turn our attention to children, the, the role of vaccinating children really is in contributing to herd immunity. And that right now is not the priority. The priority right now is hardening ourselves against the arrival of that particular variant. And I wonder how uh, we're compared to other provinces when it comes to uh, the gap between the first dose and the second dose. Dr. Chagla, should we be following the labels on, on Pfizer and Moderna? Yeah, I mean, there there's still something to be said about supply. I think it's getting better, but there's still you know, a good population that hasn't received a first dose in Ontario. We have done a really good job at getting to 50 to 60% of the population, but there's still about 48% of the adult population missing, and that's overrepresented actually in people that are 18 to 40, where they were kind of the last to be enrolled, and especially outside of the hotspots. So, you know, I, I think there is there's certainly something in an ideal scenario. We'd shorten the vaccine down to, you know, the exact manufacturer, they're as close thereof. Um, but, you know, I think there's a reasonable balance here, right? Can we still prioritize first doses into people that haven't gotten a first dose, knowing that it fundamentally changes the risk of hospitalization and death? Absolutely. You know, maybe not to the youngest ages, but certainly to those at the age of 18. Uh, and, and, yeah, getting second doses into people who are elderly, who are vulnerable, who are at high risk of exposure is also reasonable. And, and I, I think, again, what is our short-term goal now? Well, it's to offload the healthcare system as much as possible. So you want to get second doses into people that are overrepresented in healthcare, the elderly, and you probably want to start getting second doses into people that are overrepresented in transmission. And that might be again circling back to those hot spots after that vulnerable elderly cohort is dealt with. Dr. Chagla, I know we're trying to talk about the second dose strategy, but on that 40% perhaps of adults who still haven't received their first dose yet, it seems like it was almost easy to get that first 60% because people were so keen to get it. Do you think the province now also needs to change its strategy on the first dose, maybe go into buildings, maybe bring in family physicians to bring those doses in to maybe help overcome either fears or lack of understanding, in fact? 
you know, there is hesitancy and, and you know, uh, altered models going to primary care, going to pharmacies, going to trusted providers is going to be helpful to get that uptake up. You know, I think there's still an overrepresentation. You know, I work outside of the greater Toronto area. You know, my region, it, you know, willing and able 40 year olds and 30 year olds and 20 year olds aren't able to get a vaccine appointment as fast as, as people were in Toronto. Um, that's the bottom line. It's not like it's wrong. It was it was what was there to reduce transmission in the hot spots. But there's still a population that's waiting for that first dose that actually wants that first dose that just can't access it because of mm -hmm. uh, supplies into kind of less prioritized regions. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like if we're going to focus on the most vulnerable and the elderly and then move over into the hot spots, that is what we saw when the vaccines rolled out for those first doses, right? Uh, Ray Watt, so do you expect that kind of information to be coming out of this meeting tonight? <laughs> I have no idea what come out of this meeting. This has been a, a bit of a surprise throughout this entire pandemic, right? I can't predict what they're going to do. But what they should do is exactly that, focus on the hotspot areas, absolutely. When I think about who is not getting the vaccine right now, there are three categories. There are the hardcore anti-vaxxers, for whom this is like religion, and I can't really deal with that. And then there are the, the skeptics, who just need uh, a conversation. But then there are those who face physical barriers. Maybe the vaccine is not easily reachable. And that's the category I think we can target right now. Bring the vaccine to certain neighborhoods. Make it easy for people to access it. So there isn't an excuse not to get it anymore. All right? So there are things we can do that are relatively simple. They just require some infrastructural investments that I think that will come out of this meeting as well. Dr. Arya Rewa was just sort of, uh, you know, kind of chuckling about, you know, the unpredictable nature of this based on how this has perhaps been handled. And I wonder what your thoughts are. You know, we had uh, opposition leader Andrew Horvath on today saying it appears Doug Ford may have had a eureka moment, at least when it comes to whether or not to reopen schools, asking the right questions, it seems. Do you feel like the government has reassessed where it's at right now and, you know, will we'll be listening more closely to what they hear from the task force of this second dose strategy? Well, I'm really hopeful that they will. I mean, we're at this point in the pandemic where I think there's a lot of positives. I mean, as has been mentioned, and as we all know, we've passed over 50% of people who have gotten the first dose. Luckily, our cases are starting to come down. Although, I mean, hospitals and especially ICU admissions are very slowly creeping down. But I think those are all positive signs, in my opinion. So I, I do have hope that, you know, the government will listen. And once again, I mean, I do agree that, I mean, we have to protect our hospital capacity at this point in time and getting the vaccines and especially second doses into the arms of those people who are most vulnerable, especially when we have these new variants, especially the variant from India, B1617.2 uh, on the horizon. I think, I mean, that's the strategy to go by. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Chagla, there, we're talking about the AstraZeneca vaccine and those second doses trying to get to pharmacies right now. They're waiting for it. They're expiring. Uh, if we do lo lose those doses, uh, what is the significance there, the symbolism? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not great for the rest of the world looking at us, right? You know, these are doses that could be used. Yes, we want the optimal interval of 12 weeks, but there's data down to four weeks, right? There was a large U.S. clinical trial with 30,000 individuals that did a four-week dosing that still got over 70% efficacy from their vaccine. So, you know, there are places in the world struggling to vaccinate their population. We put a pause on things fine. But if we lose vaccines, and especially a significant amount in the concept of of uh, you know, making sure our population has the adequate and right decision. Yeah, you know, we, we won't necessarily be harmed by, by, by a significant amount, but it sure looks terrible to the rest of the world that we're squandering our supply, you know, for, for preferentialism. Right, what I want to ask you about the, the variant that originated in India that is, you know, currently sort of sweeping through Britain. We're not hearing that much of it in Ontario at this point right now. How concerned, though, do you think we should be about that, considering where we are in our vaccination percentages and process? Well, one dose apparently gives, as I noted, about 30 percent mm -hmm. protection. Two days is uh, over 80 percent. So some is better than none, and one dose can be pretty good. So there are two keys here. One is to get enough doses into enough people, and the second is to keep the variant out in the meantime. It looks like we're doing a good job of the second so far, though the variant is present. It's just that as things start opening up, I start to get worried. We can't open up too quickly before we have sufficient vaccination, especially double doses, right? So there's a balancing act to be um, to be achieved here. And I'm not really sure we've thought about it 
deeply enough to to warrant an appropriate response. Uh, I'm a little concerned about it. Absolutely. Uh, I, I tend to be optimistic. I think we're doing all the right things in general. But I look around uh, the country at the reopening plans from BC and Alberta, and I wonder if that's not moving too quickly. And I'm glad that Ontario is taking its time in that respect. Oh, that's interesting because we just uh, spoke with a couple of mayors in York Region who are asking, they passed a motion, they presented it to the Premier to to push step one to Monday, May 31st, instead of June 14th. What are your thoughts on that, Rewat? I don't like that at all. I think it's far too early. Um, look, we have a chance here to enter the ramp to normal and to stay that way and never have to lock down ever again. Let's not squander that chance. If we do this right, right now, we uh, see the dawn and the sun will never come down again. Right? But on the other hand, if we do some really inappropriate things like open up too quickly, we may have to ride this roller coaster a bit longer. So there's a lot to risk and a lot to gain if only we take our time. Well, let's hope we can get off that ride sooner than later. So we all appreciate uh, your time and input into this conversation. And we'll see what happens in the vaccine task force when we hopefully hear some news tomorrow. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.